Hey, welcome to Skilled Pastor, where we offer practical advice for better ministry. My name is Rob Nieves, and today I want to share with you some tips on church growth. In fact, I've got seven tips that will help you as you consider church growth. So let's dive right in. The very first one is pray. The very first tip is that you need to pray. The Bible says in Psalm 127 verse 1, it says that if the Lord doesn't build his house, then those who labor, labor in vain. So before anything, if you want to make sure that you are productive, that you can do this thing, that you can build and grow this church, you need to know the first thing I need to do is that I need to pray because I need the Lord's help in this. I need the Lord to help me and help us as we're building the church. So you need to pray and talk to God and be honest. Say, Lord, we want to grow this church. We want to see your kingdom expanded. We want to grow. Would you give us the wisdom so that we can grow this church? The second one is to organize teams. Now, I'm thinking of three in particular, although your church may have more, but there are three in particular that I want you to focus in on when you're thinking about church growth and here they are the first one is your greeter ministry those people that greet people into your church and welcome those new guests you need to make sure that you have a team of people that are excited that are enthusiastic that know how to smile and that know how to welcome people so get some of your nicest people at your church and say hey i need you to help me welcome people so as you're praying you're also getting a team of of greeters that's ready to welcome these people and have a system to greet them and to welcome them. That's the first team. The second team I would say would be your worship team. Now people are coming into church because they want to experience God. So you want to make sure that they are experiencing God in the best way possible. So whatever you have for worship, maybe you have a couple of singers, a couple of musicians, maybe you don't have any, but regardless of what you have, you got to get some sort of a team that's going to lead people in worship. I have a good friend of mine that started his church just watching YouTube videos, but what they did do is that they had people that would lead along with those YouTube videos. So they would watch the YouTube videos of worship. And then along with that, people were worshiping, engaging, but there was someone there always encouraging uh, everyone in the audience to come and worship together. So that's the second team, your worship team. Make sure that you assemble that team. And the third team I would say would be your children's ministry you want to make sure you have a solid children's ministry in place people want to come in and worship for themselves and they want the the word of god but they also want a place where their family would be able to worship and grow and mature spiritually so they need a place for their children so make sure that you have a children's ministry that not only is ministering to those kids right and that's important make sure that it's not just a babysitting club but make sure that they're actually doing some bible training for those children that's fun and exciting that's relevant for their age group but it also gives the parents a break to be able to worship God freely without having to deal with the children you know fussing around and things like that so the second thing is you want to make sure that you organize your teams and by the way these teams you've got to let them know hey we want to grow this church because these people need to be praying with you and they need to be just as excited as you are about church growth they need to be just as excited so that they can do their work with that much more enthusiasm the third thing i would say is that you need to perfect your preaching skills so you need to preach better if you're the pastor and i and you probably are if you're watching this video you need to invest in yourself you need to study more you need to invest in how to communicate the word of God. Now, studying the word of God is one thing, but preaching it is an entirely other thing. And you may be the type of person that really loves to study the word of God. And that's probably why you're in ministry, because you just love the word of God. But communicating what you've learned to people, uh, bringing it so, so that they have it in bite-sized portions, that's a completely different art and skill. So you need to invest in how do I communicate best uh, the 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 message that God has given me for them. I've got some videos here and be sure to check in the description below on how you can get those skills perfected. You need to be a better preacher, a better communicator of the gospel. Tip number four is that you want to set up systems. Now, 
you you want more than just these two systems but at the very least you need two systems you need a system to welcome people and you also need a system to follow up with people now many people don't even think about the welcome the welcome is so important there are people that are making a decision to visit your church this sunday perhaps and if they show up to church and no one greets them and no one welcomes them or no one even acts like they were anticipating they're actually maybe even surprised that someone walked in through the doors that's not going to be a good feeling people when they come in they are filled with anxiety the best thing that you can do as a church is welcome them appropriately welcome them like you were expecting them so again we talked about having those greeters make sure that you have a system a way to greet them and welcome them and it's not just a smile but be ready with maybe a gift uh, be ready with maybe a, a connect card of some sort some way that you can stay in touch with them and that leads me to the second part of that system you you also need a follow-up system what are you gonna do to get their information maybe to get their information you offer a free gift so that maybe they give you an email address a contact phone number but you need a way to follow up with them now here's the mistake we make often the mistake that we make is that we typically just follow up once maybe one phone call afterward one email and then that's it which is great it's better than nothing but we need a system how do we follow up when they don't respond right in marketing it's said that people need something like seven touch points before they make a decision to buy well the same thing here people need a couple of touch points with your church before they make a decision to continue uh, coming back to your church so you need to make sure that you have some sort of system for follow-up how are we going to follow up with these people what kind of gifts are we going to have how are we going to welcome them you need need to have those in place if you intend to grow your church. Tip number five is simply to promote your church. Now, when we think of promotion, we're just thinking business and we say, well, how could a church or should a church even promote themselves? But I believe that a church does need, does need to promote themselves. Now, I would recommend two main ways of promotion. First of all, I would recommend social media that you promote on social media. That means that maybe you're paying for some advertisements on social media, uh, maybe making sure that your website is SEO ready, it's search engine optimized. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, talk to your web developer. They should know what I'm talking about there. So make sure that people can find you when they search, uh, say church near me or church in my town, that they can find your church. You need to promote your church here's what I'm afraid of sometimes I believe that your church is a great church I believe that there's many great churches out there but we're not telling people about the churches so whether it's uh, on on social media or whether it's maybe signage outside of your church or maybe in the neighborhood you need to promote your church but another way to promote your church is also by word of mouth so you need to remind your people hey we want to grow our church we're praying that we grow so you need to tell your friends you need to invite them create a culture of invitation at your church i think that that's so important businesses know this so well how do they grow they grow by promotion and they grow by word of mouth so make sure that your people are promoting that they're inviting so as you're promoting on social media as you're putting signage by the way make sure that your service times are outside somewhere where people can see them and on your website I can't tell you how many times I've gone to a website I can't find the address I can't find their service times that's got to be like right front and center so that people can find it right away they want to come to your church sometimes they just don't know when you're having services so make sure you're promoting online uh, through social media that you're promoting maybe with signage outside of your building and you're also communicating to people that we want people to invite others to church so be sure to be promoting tip number six is to organize outreach events uh, whether your church is giving something or whether your church is a part of some community affair or something like that uh, you need to be reaching out into your community reaching out people need to know that you're there and be sure to have a t-shirt or something that says your church name be sure to bring that because people want to know who is doing this why are they doing it but make sure that you're reaching out into your community as 
as you're reaching out into your community, people are getting to know a little bit more about your church. They're meeting your people. And because your people are inviting, they'll be bringing them in. That's another healthy way of growing your church. And the last tip I've got for you today is simply to capitalize, listen to me, to capitalize on special events. All year round, we have special events. We have Mother's Day, we have Easter, uh, a little bit of Father's Day. Uh, we have great events that people will typically come to church. So capitalize on that. Make it a bigger event than it would normally maybe normally be uh, maybe it's already a big event so if you just make it just a little bit bigger maybe promote it more get people to invite more you will see your church grow because more people will be participating now to that i would say go even further i think that at least once a month or once a quarter you need to have a big event that you're inviting people to you're also giving your people you're also giving your people the opportunity to expect something big is happening which will uh, encourage them and motivate them as well to invite someone and uh, that is my last tip but I've got one little bonus one here and thanks for watching to the end because you got the bonus this is my last bonus tip you need to talk to your people to your church people let them know our church wants to grow we're praying for growth we're inviting people they might say well i'm shy i don't really feel like inviting anyone or i don't have time for outreach events which we all know those are mostly excuses but nevertheless you can tell them listen if you can't uh, participate in the events if you can't uh you know invite someone at the very very least we just need you to be there. We need you to attend faithfully and speak to your people about faithful attendance. If your people attend faithfully, that in of itself will help your church grow. And you might say, well, how? Well, here's what happens. Once you've invited a guest, if that guest does come to your church, if you have an empty building, there's a good chance that guest will not return. However, if they're excited because your people are there and there's people there to greet them and, and connect with them, that's going to be so much better as an experience for your guests. So it doesn't matter where you're at right now as a church. If you get your people to participate faithfully and if you follow these tips, I can guarantee you, especially the prayer one, I can guarantee you your church will grow. So follow these tips. I'm sure that there's more things that I could have added here and maybe you have some ideas. Would you be so kind if you can think of something else that I didn't think about for this video? Go ahead and post it in the comments below so that everyone else can see it. I'm sure that will help. Again, thanks for watching our videos. I really so appreciate it. Remember to like this video. If you like it, share it with someone, subscribe to the channel for more content like this, and I will see you in the next video.